Hello everyone, Bertha here with an in-depth guide on Katars. I got every Katar legend to diamond last season. I'm at least level 19 on all my Katar legends. I've got two that are above level 25. So I will be going over each move on Katars, detailing their strengths and weaknesses. Then I will explain the different situations to use them in and give some overall tips at the end. Neutral Light has low startup frames, high active frames, and low recovery frames. It covers a small area with short range and does average damage. Side Light has a low amount of startup frames, an average amount of active frames, and a high amount of recovery frames. It covers a large area with short range and does average damage. It has the highest amount of true damage potential because it can combo into Neutral Light and Down Light when the enemy is not too damaged. Downlight has low startup frames, low active frames, and high recovery frames. It covers a large area with good range and does average damage. Neutral Air has average startup frames, average active frames, and high recovery frames. It covers an average area with short range and does low damage. Side Air has average startup frames, low active frames, and high recovery frames. It covers a small area with short range and does average damage. It has noticeably huge force at higher damages. Down Air has low startup frames, very high active frames, and average recovery frames. It covers a very large area with short range and can do a lot of damage if it hits with all the hitboxes. Recovery has pretty much the same stats as Down Air except it hits diagonally upwards. Even the damage is the same. The only difference is that Recovery has slightly less recovery frames and noticeably more force because it is a heavy attack. Ground Pound has high startup frames, active frames last until you hit or let go, and average recovery frames. It has average size hitbox, moves downward incredibly fast, and does a lot of damage. Now that I went over all the Katar moves, let's talk about how to use them effectively in the neutral game, which is the part of the game when neither player has an advantage over the other and are trying to land the first hit on the enemy. The neutral light is mostly good at hitting enemies that tend to dodge a lot. In terms of range, the side light beats it horizontally and the down light beats it vertically. So if you don't expect the enemy to dodge, then using either down light or side light would be better in most cases. But if they do tend to dodge, then neutral light is perfect to punish them because it has active frames that last almost as long as a normal dodge and even longer than a speed dodge. So if you think the enemy will dodge, position near them and then use neutral light when they dodge. It will catch them very very easily. The side light is great for punishing poorly spaced moves by the enemy because its hitbox moves forward pretty far and can even punish a missed gun neutral light. Just take care not to try to contest most moves directly because its range is terrible and will lose to most moves in terms of range. However, you can negate this by utilizing the invulnerability frames granted after a speed dodge. If you don't know about invulnerability frames, then check out my guide on it which I will link in the description below and at the end of the video. But basically, if you do a full speed dodge and cancel that into a side light, then it will be invulnerable until after the first hitbox comes out, which makes for a great engage tool because of how far the hitbox can reach from the starting position. It has decent amount of active frames on top of having fast startup frames, which makes it very capable of punishing a neutral dodge or a back dodge. Since it moves so fast, I would wait until I see the dodge, then use this move rather than try to predict the dodge and use the move before they dodge. Downlight has very high priority because of its speed and range, so it's best used as an anti-air. If the enemy tries to hit you from above, then simply use downlight and it will win in most cases. Take care not to recklessly throw it out though because it has a quick startup so it's very rare that the enemy will actually have time to move into your downlight by accident. So you have to aim the move correctly for it to work. It's also an extremely good move when the enemy is close to you on the ground as well. Because not only does it hit stacked but it also moves your character upwards and allows you to jump before even getting close to the ground. So it's very hard for the enemy to punish you if they were grounded when you started the downlight. Neutral Air is a very safe move to use in the air because it almost does not hinder movement at all. While hitting in a complete circle around the user along with having decent startup and recovery makes it very versatile and end up being the most used move for a lot of Qatar users. You can use this move after missing a move to cover yourself if you're too close to the enemy. You can jump from below onto the enemy and neutral air. You can speed dodge onto the enemy and cancel onto neutral air which will give you invulnerability frames for the entire startup. If you miss a neutral air, make sure to move away from the enemy because you are allowed to move left and right during the whole attack from startup to the end of the recovery time. 
Side air is a very peculiar move because it trades safety and range for force so it shines the most when the enemy is at least at orange or higher damage. It can even knock out the enemy sooner than ground pound or recovery can. It is best used as a movement read such as using the side air where the enemy might jump into or using a speed dodge into side air for a surprise attack. The way Satter works is that it will launch the user forward a bit and then throw out short hit boxes in front and diagonally downwards for a very short amount of time. Here is a visual of where the move starts versus where the hitboxes come out. A picture provided by part of the Creed who currently makes very good Brahalla podcasts on YouTube. The visual is correct for the most part, but if you were in the middle of the jump, your hitboxes would come out a bit higher than where you start, and if you were falling, then it would come out lower than where you start. At the peak of a jump, it would come out pretty much exactly like this. The point is that the side air won't stop your vertical momentum whether it is up or down, but you will move horizontally forward as shown in the picture the same way every single time. As you can see here, Side air can travel a decent distance forward, but the body moves with it, making the range very short. After the tiny amount of hitboxes come out, the user will continue to move forward while falling as if stunned for a short time, which makes this move incredibly punishable if you barely miss the enemy in front of you because you would just fall right on top of them without an escape. That is why taking this risk is rarely a good idea unless the payoff is hitting the enemy very far off of the platform. However, if you were to attempt to move right above the enemy and miss, you would move away from the enemy, so it is a bit safer but it's still risky. The downer is pretty good at punishing as long as you use the move not too far from the enemy because the full downer can take a bit of time to finish. That's why if you engage with this move, it should ideally be after a short jump or when you're both near each other in the air. Since downer can move across a large area, you can also use it to punish a poorly spaced move. A long attack like a signature or if the enemy dodges whether it be in place or backwards and you can get the read ahead of time. The recovery is a great move to use against players that tend to love jumping because it can cover a large area diagonally upwards in the air. Air moves generally have slower startup than the grounded moves, so a move like recovery which has fast startup for an air move makes for easy hits when the enemy tends to jump above you a lot, and its slow recovery frames along with moving the user a long distance from the original position makes this move very low risk to use while potentially dealing a lot of damage when it connects. All these things makes recovery the best choice by far when the enemy insists on jumping diagonally above you. The guitar ground pound is one of the best ground pounds in the game. Having the second highest speed and top 3 widest ground pound hitbox makes it an incredible edge guarding move. It's incredibly hard for the enemy to see the ground pound coming because of its speed, so as long as you mix up the timing of the ground pound by sometimes ground pounding and then sometimes hovering for about half a second to a second before ground pounding, then the enemy will would not be able to react to the ground pound most of the time. Plus the wide hitbox makes it so the enemy has to dodge and can't just jump out of the way most of the time. The ground pound is amazing for edge guarding, usually my first choice in that situation. That covers the neutral game. Now I will go over some tips and tricks to maximize your damage output and minimize the damage that you take. All the ground light attacks have only 5 frames of startup, which is only 3 frames longer than both dodge and jump startup. To put into perspective, that's only 1 20th of a second difference, meaning that it's almost always worth it to go for another ground move even if you miss, as long as that move can reach the enemy. For example, if you miss a down air behind the enemy and perhaps they spot dodged or miss a move in the wrong direction, then just sidelight them rather than dodge since it's so fast. Maybe you barely missed a sidelight while they jumped or dodged upwards next to you. Then just use a downlight and it will be faster than any air move they can pull out most of the time. Almost every guitar move has short enough startup to be invulnerable on their first frame of hitbox, meaning you can always win on the first hit unless the enemy has invulnerability frames as well. So don't be afraid to do speed dodges into attacks with the exception of ground pound, side air, and neutral air. The first hitbox of those three moves are still vulnerable. Sidelight can be a very good escape tool that can also have a chance of hitting the enemy. It has almost the same speed as if you were to run while dishing out hitboxes as well. So if you are near the enemy and decide to back up and don't feel like dodging or jumping, then sidelighting backwards could get you some damage if the enemy happens to try and dodge behind you. It's tough to get a knockout with most Qatar moves besides sad air, which isn't all that reliable, but Qatars has a very strong kit for edge guarding, so learning to gimp is very important on Qatars. 
with just repeatedly hitting the enemy off the platform to their doom. A few common and reliable ways to do this is down air into sad air or neutral air. You can start off with ground pound then down air into sad air or neutral air as well. You can also add in a neutral air in between the ground pound and down air as well if the enemy is not very damaged. Katars are very well known for having a lot of strings. Some of the most common and reliable ones are neutral light into recovery, down air into side light into neutral light into recovery, and down light into neutral air. And one not so common or reliable string is the loop string, which can do over 100 damage if you start from white damage and the enemy is terrible at dodging. It is down light into jump reverse down air, into chase dodge, down light into jump reverse down air. And you just repeat this process until you can't anymore. I go into more detail about this string and previous strings as well as follow ups in case the enemy dodges a lot in another video. I also expand on edge guarding in that video which I will link in the description below and also put at the end of the video. Thanks for watching, if you enjoyed the video please leave a like, subscribe and share the video with your friends. Check out my complete guitar strings guide if you haven't already. Thank you to Bazillion for being a huge supporter for 2 months in a row. I'll see you guys next time.